ओके Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful afternoon. We thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you because you sent your word and you heal the sick and you deliver them from destruction. And even today, thank you for sending us your word. Our eyes are on you and our hearts are open to receive of you. We thank you because your word will do us good. Amen. Teach us, sweet Holy Spirit, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's, it's afternoon. God bless you. It's afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. For the short time we've got, we will dive into the word of God. Are you ready to dive in? Let's go. Thank you, Lord. Let's open our scriptures to Hosea chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. Hosea chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. It says, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till it comes and rains righteousness on you. Somebody is probably asking, what does this mean? I'll read it in New Living Translation. And it says, I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness. And you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord. That he may come and shower righteousness upon you. Say to your neighbor, now it is time to seek the Lord. Now to the yes. So what does this verse mean? The word of the Lord came through the prophet Hosea to the nation of Israel. At this time, they had sinned against God. And this word came as a rebuke and as a promise. And it's, God said to them, sow for yourselves righteousness. Plant the good seeds of righteousness. So right doing is a good seed. And he said, when we plant the seed of right doing, we will harvest a crop of love. Not before you can plant, you need to plow the ground. You know, Old King James says, break up your fallow ground. So if a, la if a land is lying fallow, you, if you plant, you won't see a harvest. You won't get a harvest. So the first thing farmers will do is to plow the hard ground. So God is calling us this morning to plow the hard ground of our hearts. What does that mean? Maybe there are some areas of our lives where we are struggling with the Lord, where the Lord is saying to us, stop doing this. But we keep at it. We keep doing it. God wants to reach those hard to reach areas of our hearts. The word of God says in Jeremiah, God said, it's not my word like hammer that break the rock into pieces. So when the word of God comes, not only does it break the rock of a stony heart, he also, the word of God is also a seed that will germinate and produce fruits of righteousness. So he says, for now is the time to seek the Lord. When we seek God, he rains his blessings upon us. So when we seek God in right doing, when we seek him in his word, the fruit of that is his blessings. May you receive God's blessings this year in Jesus' name. Amen. If we look at verse 13 of the same chapter, it says, you have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruits of lies. 
because you trusted in your own way in the multitude of your mighty men. We will also look at, at examples. So God is saying, these people plowed wickedness and so they reaped iniquity. They, they've eaten the fruit of lies. So they lived a lifestyle of lies, of deception, of delusion, rather than right standing according to God's word. Maybe you may be here and you are saying, but I don't do that. I don't live a life of hypocrisy. God said, you trusted me your own way. How many times have we trusted in our own ways instead of trusting in God's ways? So you trusted in the multitude of your mighty men. Maybe you have money, you've got a good job. Maybe you're beautiful. Maybe you, I don't know. I don't know what you have, but the best of a man is still a man. And it does not matter the wealth or the riches that you have without God, you are so poor. You are so poor. If you are here and you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, you are very poor. And so God is calling them back into order and says, stop trusting in your own ways and in the multitude of your mighty men. So my sisters and brothers, it is time to seek the Lord. How do we seek him? To seek his word. I realize that this generation or this season or this time that we are in, people don't have time for the word of God anymore. We wake up and we are in a rush to get to work. We come back and we are too tired. And so we are living our lives without God. How wrong we have been. I want us to look at the story you know, last night I was praying. I was like, Lord, because I can't speak if God doesn't give me what to speak. I can't speak. <laughs> and uh, it's amazing that when you ask God, he speaks to you. Does the Lord speak, still speak these days? Yes. Thank you. I'm glad that some of us know that he still does. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. They will not hear the voice of strangers. So they hear my voice and they follow me. So we're going to look at the story. Let's open up the scriptures to First Chronicles chapter 20. First Chronicles chapter 20. It's a story that we know very well, but I want to bring out some principles that we need to live by. Pardon me, Second Chronicles chapter 20. I read from verse two. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they are in Azanon, Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And so three nations came against him. Moab, the people of Hammon, and others. And somebody came to him and said, a great multitude is coming against you. And what was the next thing that happened to the king? Fear gripped him. Maybe you are in a situation where you feel like a great multitude is against you today. Maybe fear has gripped your heart today because of one circumstance or the other. One thing you're trusting the Lord for and it looks like it's taking time. Maybe your hope has been dashed. At one point or the other, we will all have to go through this. Maybe you've been disappointed. You've been rejected and dejected. Maybe you're downcast. The psalmist said, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? Put your hope in God because I shall yet praise him is the help of my countenance. The king was afraid. Did he not have any? He did. Both. 
The fact, the bad news that three nations were coming against him brought fear into him. When we hear bad news and when we see circumstances that are contrary to what our expectations are, fear can grip us. It's a natural thing to fear, but it's supernatural to overcome fear. So what did the king do? How did he overcome his fear in the midst of this battle against him? Verse 3 says, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. That's the answer. The title of the message is The Word of Victory. So when fear came to the king, he ran to the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord. How do you handle fear? And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. You don't have to fast before you seek God. But sometimes it's also good to fast. And we don't fast for problems. We fast to seek the face of God and to hear his voice. So Judah, verse 4, gathered together to ask help from the Lord. Your help comes from God. Yes. It's not for, from your friend. It's not from the boss. The Bible says promotion does not come from the west, east, or south. Where does it come from? He didn't mention north in that verse because God is in the North Pole. So they gathered, Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek God. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? From this couple of verses that I've just read, we see that God is sovereign. He said, oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nation? When you know that God is sovereign, your heart can rest in him. Not only is God sovereign, he said in your hand, is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you. God is invincible. He's invisible, although visible. We see him in his words. We see him in Jesus. But he's invincible. What does that mean? He cannot be defeated. So no matter the battle that is coming against me, when I remember that God is sovereign and is invincible, I know that I cannot be defeated. I'll jump and go to verse 9. If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and sing. When we see God, he hears us and he saves us. And now here are the people of Hamon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Let's jump to verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. What power do you think you've got? What wisdom do you think you've got without God? <laughs> None. Say, no, do we know what to do? But our eyes are on you. So when the battle is rising against us, and we are afraid. What we need to do is to seek the Lord. We seek him in the place of prayer, expecting that he will speak to us. Pastor has taught us that prayer is not just talking to God. When you pray, expect to hear God and you hear him from his word. So you pray, you pause, and you listen. And he will instruct you 
from his word. So Jehoshaphat the king recognized that they are help. If God did not help them, then they are done for. So he sought the face of God. So what happened after all this? In verse 14, then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, interesting names, a Levite of the sons of Asa in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are today. This word may not be for everyone. Maybe you are enjoying God's victories at the moment. But this word is for those of us who are going through battles. The word as they sought the face of God. The scripture says, the word of the Lord came through his servant. And he said, do not be afraid. God is saying to you, do not be afraid. Amen. You know, the first thing that gripped the king was fear. The scripture says fear brings torment. Fear of the unknown. Fear of the future. Fear of no money. Fear of failure. You know, we fear every, anything that can just make us afraid. The enemy will throw it at us because he knows that if he can steal your faith and make you fear, then he's got you. Fear brings torment. It brings a yoke of bondage. And the word of the Lord came and said, don't be afraid. God is saying to someone this morning, do not be afraid. I've got you. I've got your back. Maybe some people have risen against you. God is saying, I've got your back. Maybe you're afraid. Oh, starting from the scratch. I've left, I've broken the bridge. God is saying, do not be afraid. Nor dismayed. Because of this great multitude that you have seen, the battle is not yours, it's mine. Who can defeat the Lord? God. Now, that God of the universe Recite on the inside of you by his Holy Spirit. Yes. Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? It's not about the circumstances that surround us or the situations we're going through. But it's about who I am. Who am I? God made me who I am. And I'm his. And he's invincible. He's sovereign. He cannot be defeated. And when you recite on the inside of me, who is that situation? What is that situation that will defeat you? So the word of God for someone, one person here, it may be more than one. I've seen your troubles and your struggles and we all do go through it. Pastor was saying life with God is not a sprint. It doesn't just take us boom, boom. And then you get to the promised land. It's a marathon. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours or mine. It's God's battle. Anyway, verse 16, not only did the word, I said this title is the word of victory. I believe that when God wants to do a miracle, he will send his word first. For me. Jesus said to Peter, they've struggled all night, frustrated, no show, no business. And Jesus said, let's down your nets. A word from God can change the direction of your life. Amen. A word from God can take you from the miry clay to the rock. So how much should we desire and long to hear this word from God? Not only did God assure them that the battle is it, and he's going to fight that battle on their behalf. He gave them a strategy. He said in verse 16, tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the accent of Z's. The one who, the light that shines in the dark. He knows the secrets in the dark places. <laughs> he said they will surely come against, they will surely come up by the accent of this, and you'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. 
you will not need to fight in this battle. Hallelujah. God is saying to us, you won't, why are you stressing? I was like that. I'll pray and I'll worry about that situation. And one day God said, yeah, you don't trust me. I said, what? I was like, Lord, I trust you. Of course, I trust you. And God said, but if you trust me, why are you worrying? That day I realized that every time I, I worry, I'm saying, Lord, I don't trust you. Does it mean worry does not come? Worry still comes. And when it comes, I say, Lord, you told me that when I worry, it means I don't trust you. Please help me to trust you more. That's how I handle my worry now. So the Lord said to them, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you? You are God's. Not only is God for you, he is with you. The one that cannot be defeated is with you. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. You know the end of that story because of time. And what King Jehoshaphat did was to appoint people to begin to praise God. And what happened? They got the victory. Because he sought, can you imagine if he did not seek the face of God? He wouldn't have known the mind of God. That word of victory wouldn't have come. He probably would have hired other nations and their army to fight against those other three nations. So let's begin to seek God. Let, let us return back to the Lord so that we can hear and receive his word of victory. I said, acknowledge your limitations. You know, he said, he said, we don't have power of our own. Sometimes when you think that you are the best, have you seen the mighty falling? How have the mighty falling? We've seen them. Sometimes you feel like I've got it. I'm cool and calm and collected. And God will show you that without you, without me, you are nobody. The scripture says with God is treasure in half in vessels. So it's God who has made us who we have. So we must acknowledge our limitations like King Jehoshaphat did. That we have no power of our own. And if God did not help us, we cannot be helped. I also wrote down here from verses 14 and 15, I said, expect God to speak to you about your situation. If you're not expecting, you won't receive. You won't know when the Lord is speaking. Are you expecting, Pastor mentioned something like that this morning. Are you expecting God to speak? Is anybody expecting God to speak? Yes. Do you have any situation that you need to hear God about? Hmm. Okay, expect God to speak. Say, God, I'm waiting. What's your word about this situation? What's on your mind about this situation? Because Jehoshaphat sought the face of God, the word of reassurance came. Strategy was given to him and victory was assured. Quickly, we'll go to Acts 13, 1 and 3. I want to bring something out of there. Acts 13, 1 and 3. I pray that the Lord will speak to you this morning and encourage you. In Acts 13, verses 1 and 3, let's see what happened here. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manien, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and so on. Verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke. I said, you know, you, you can be fasting and not hear God. That's hunger strike. We don't need to fast to hear God. Let me just make it clear. Let's not be religious. You don't, it's not until you fast that God will speak to you. Do your children need to go on hunger strike before you can treat them? No. But once in a while, it's good to fast. 
it's a good. Jesus said, he said, this things do not go but by fasting and prayer. So there's a place for fasting. And when we fast, we're fasting to hear his voice. We're fasting to know him better. We're not just fasting because we've got problems and we want him to come like a... <laughs> anyway. Um, so these people were ministering to the Lord and they fasted and the Holy Spirit spoke. What did he say? He said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. The point I want to bring out of here is that when you have decisions to make, make sure you hear God's voice. Don't go by the seeing of your eyes. Our young people have decisions to make. I'm sure that many of them are thinking about relationships. I'm talking about those who are matured now, not those who are in secondary school. Okay, <laughs> the more serious note, or even primary school. Okay, I'm talking about the matured ones among us. Are you are you hearing the voice of God? I think priority is to know how to recognize God's voice. So here, the Holy Spirit spoke the counsel of God. They received direction for the next steps. May the Lord speak to you about the next steps in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Let's read 1 Samuel chapter 30. The word of victory is coming your way. And that word will bring you out of every battle and give you victory. In the name of Jesus. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Let's look at the example of David. What happened to David? 1 Samuel chapter 30. Just stay with me. I read from verses 1 to 4. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag. On the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag attacked, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken captive the women and those who were there. From small to great, they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you wept? Is some, has somebody been crying? Have you been weeping? And you, don't, you wept until you had no energy left to weep. Weeping may endure for a night, but your joy has come. In this season, as we wrap up this month and as we enter the last quarter of this year that we are already in, the Lord will turn our weeping into joy. Amen. Have you been weeping of recent? And you have no more power to weep. Are you in a great distress today? Are you in pain? Are you going through agony? Does it seem like everything is just working against you? I have good news for you. There is hope in God and in his word. So what did David do? Verse 6. Verse 6 says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. It looks like your best is still not good enough. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. That's what the word of God does to you. When the word of victory comes to you because you are asking God and expecting it, it gives you strength in your inner man. You know the end of the story. Those Hebrew men were not afraid to be thrown, they, in fact, they were ready to die. Do whatever, do your worst, king. But Jesus showed up for them. The fire that was meant to destroy them broke their chains and they were set loose. Those that took them to the fire got burnt and died. But that fire set their chains loose and they were walking in the fire praising God. The scripture says, David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. And then what happened? 
Look at verse 8. So David inquired of the Lord. That's the word again, seeking God. He was faced with a dilemma. He didn't know what to do. He inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? Do you walk in step with the Lord or with, you, with his spirit? Or do you run ahead of God or do you stay behind him? We need to begin to walk in step with God. You know, there's so much that the Holy Spirit has to offer us and give us. The Bible says he knows the mind of God. No, but none of us know the mind of God except the Holy Spirit. And he searches the deep things of God and reveals them to us. So if we walk closely with the Holy Spirit, he will reveal those things to us. So what happened when David made an inquiry? Look at the same verse. And he answered, God answered David. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Are you planning to take a step? Has God given you a vision? Are you looking at no resources, no people to help me, no workers, no commitment? God said, pursue. You shall surely overtake. You shall recover hope. You will not fail. If the Lord has put that idea in your mind, go for it. As you take the first step, you will make the provision. Hallelujah. So we saw that David did not just go after the truth because he could have died. In fact, one king in, this, in the scriptures died, King Gea, because he listened to lies from the prophets. And when the true prophet of God said, God said, don't go, because if you go, you will die. He was not happy because he wanted to go. He went and he died. If you go on a journey that the Lord has not sent you, please don't blame God for it. So it's important that we walk in step with God. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Are you getting something? Deuteronomy chapter 8. I love this scripture from verse 2. Remember at this point, the people were in the wilderness. That's the story when they were in the wilderness. Verse 2, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart. <laughs> Hold on. So God is saying the reason why they went through the wilderness, God was checking out their hearts. Where are their hearts actually for me or not for me? For 40 years. He said to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you. He allowed you to hunger. Sometimes God will allow some things to happen to us so that we can get to the promised land. And fed you with manna. You see, they didn't actually own guys. Just that the food they wanted was not the one they got. Which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That it might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. Bread alone does not satisfy. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Let your life be dictated by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So what I love late, uh, Dr. Charles Stanley said, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. If God has said it, that's what I'll do. I may suffer to start with, but the blessings will come. Amen. Amen. So the wilderness journey, I want to bring a point out of here. This journey was meant to take from the wilderness to the promised land was meant to take 11 days. How long did it take them? 40 years. I want to speak. I want to speak to the young people. We're all young. Most of us are in our 50s, apart from the other, you know, 50s or maybe 60s, some of us. Do you want to waste time? Do you want to waste decades of your life? Do you want a journey of 11 days to become 40 years? No, we, we've got no time to waste. We have no time to waste. He wants to preach. <laughs> 11 days journey 
So the promised land became 40 years. Why? Because of hardness of us, stubbornness and stiff nakedness. Does it make sense? So God wants to take each and every one of us to the promised land. The Bible says it is desire to give us good pleasure. Every good gift comes from him. But you know what? He's more interested in our character. He's more interested in changing us on the inside. Because if you have a child that is 10 years old, you won't give them the blessing of a car. What will you do for them? You want to kill that child, basically. So there's... God takes us step by step. There's a blessing that is due in seasons. You don't want blessings that you are not ready for because it might be too much. And instead of it making you, it breaks you. Am I communicating? Or... Okay. So God took them through the wilderness to prepare them. So when we are going through things that we cannot explain, I'll call that our wilderness experience. It's not a time to chicken out or turn our back at God. It's a time to seek him and draw closer to him. God wants to bless us and fulfill his promises. But our character is more important to him. And his word is what can change our character. His word breathes life. <laughs> May we enjoy God's fullness Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to start rounding up in Psalm 27. Verses 4 and 5. Psalm 27, verse 4, has become my favorite scripture <laughs> of recent. I've known it before, but it's like my focus now. Verse 4 says, one thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Today, I want to encourage you to ask God questions. Do you ask God questions or do you think you cannot ask God questions? Let's ask God questions because when you ask, I remember one of our boys, Abraham, he was like, I've got lots of questions about God. This was some years ago. You might not, you might have forgotten. I said, write down all your questions because God will give answer. So write them down. I guarantee you, each and every one of them answers will come. Maybe you have questions today. Ask God because He wants to give you answers. So same David, who asked of the Lord, who inquired and said, Shall I pursue this group? Will I overtake them? He said in verse 4. He said, one thing is my desire. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that the Gentiles are seeking after will be added unto you. One thing I have desired of the Lord and that will I seek. I want to implore us, beg us, plead with us, small and great. You're not too small to hear God's voice. Let's seek God and his voice. He said, I want to inquire in his temple. I want to behold his beauty. Make inquiry of the Lord. Because he will give you a word of victory as you do so. Amen. So, as I begin to round up. Let your one desire be to seek the Lord. Inquire of him. I know we all live busy lives. We've got children to look after. We've got jobs. We've got families. We've got different things going on. But in the midst of it all, let God be your priority. You will never regret it. If you don't want your journey to the promised land to take... I, don't, I can't do the maths now. 11... <laughs> 1140 at 40 years. If you don't want your journey of 11 days to become 40 years, you'll be wise to begin to seek the voice of God's word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. 
but by every word that comes out. So that tells me that the word of God gives life. It gives light. It gives instructions. It gives insight. It gives wisdom. It shows you the way out of the complexity of life. Let God's word transform you. Let God's word give you strategy for life. Build your marriage on God's word, not on traditions. Let God's word give you direction and wisdom to live a victorious life. Shall we pray? I want us to ask the Lord. Maybe you've never heard God's voice. Maybe you're going through a situation at the moment and you don't know what to do. God has an answer. Will you inquire of him? Will you seek him? Let's ask him, the Lord, I want to hear your voice over this situation. It's not just when problems come anyway that we seek God. He wants to speak to us on a daily basis. He longs to fellowship with us. Are you longing like God is longing for your fellowship? Ask him to give you grace. Father, we ask for grace. I ask that you give me grace, Lord. And my one desire will be to seek you like never before. There's so much to lay hold on. There's so much that you want to do for us. And yet many times we just, we just comfortable where we are. And you want to take us higher. I ask that you open our eyes, open our hearts, Lord. Let the fallow ground be broken up. Yes, that we will begin to sow in righteousness and seek you and seek for your voice. Listen for your voice. We may receive a word of victory. Transform our lives and change our situations. And take us to where we belong. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, powerful, powerful. We give God the glory. We give God the honor. The word of victory. As I sat down there, I realized what God is saying concerning the last two months of the year to Ross and the plausibility of it that the desires of your heart can actually be granted you and it, they will be granted you. Amen. And I see from that message that there's a difference between prayer and seeking the face of God. That prayer itself is not the same as seeking the face of God. But when you pray and you expect a direction, then you are seeking the face of God. You may be praying for a matter, praying, 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 but still you are not seeking him. But prayer will let you seek the face of God. Was when you keep praying for direction, when you keep praying for a know-how, and you could not do anything until you get a direction that is seeking the face of God. So it's this is what I believe the Lord is telling us, but spend more time seeking his face for direction. And the last two months of this beautiful year will end well for you. Amen. There's another thing I've learned is today, don't give up on that dream it's still possible to realize them. See? It's possible to realize them. 
be courageous to do something new and innovative. Fear, as we have been told, is a tool that the devil uses to kind of truncate us, keep us in place, in the same place. Keep saying the same story. Keep singing the same song from the same song sheet as we have been doing for many years. But from today, that has stopped. Amen. It's a new chapter for you. It's a new chapter for me. You could imagine the king. He was gripped by fear. But he sought the face of God for direction. Somebody once said, fear, each letter is something you should be aware of. There are false evidence appearing real. They look real, but they are not real. And the more you look at them, the more fearful you become. But if I were you, I will look at the word of God. Whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Amen. Let's thank God once again and clap those hands together for the Lord. Stand on his word. For his anointed servant that he has used. I just love hearing people preach. I just sit down there taking notes. I feel every woman should be challenged in this church. Pastor wants to sit and listen to your messages. So if you are courageous enough, can I see you after the service? So that I can walk out the rotor. I mean it. I mean it. Sister Gabriela, I mean it. I mean it. Sister Busy, watch it. I mean it. Honestly. And Sister Lucy, those three people have called. You are next in line. If you are honestly, if you if you really know that you like it to serve God in that way. Why not? I want to sit and hear you preach and deliver the good things of God in you. Why not? And I believe a lot of us will be blessed. Amen. So next Sunday, get ready. <laughs> All right. The Lord, the Lord help us. The Lord help us. All right. Let us um, uh, uh, go to the next section. And that is to give God our offerings and our tithes. The Bible says, give Luke 6. It said, give and it shall be given to you. A good measure that is pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men bring into your bosom. It's a good thing to know that God can cause men to bring into <laughs> our bosom when you do what he says. So let's look at that. The God that can give into our bosom. Luke chapter 6, isn't it? And what verse is that? What verse is it? Huh? That's it. Luke 6. That's it. No, that's not that's it. That's it. What's wrong with this? Okay, I was in chapter 7. Luke 6, that's it. Say, give uh, it to be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be put into your bosom. But with the same measure that you use, 
it will be measured back to you. In other words, you're saying that, well, this is how much God has been of a blessing to me. And this is how much I'm going to respond to him. But if I were you, let's respond to him well. Because it's the last Sunday of the month. And we are grateful for this journey that the Lord has taken us. If you are given online, please, that is it on the screen, which I cannot say out there. All right. And for those who are in the church as well, you can also give online. So that will save some money on uh, stationery. Very important as well. So let's let's go on for it with it. Thank you. Offering time, like it matter. You are on our worthy Lord. You will be first. Let's keep the way of That song is saying that it is songs of appreciation to God, not to man. I see some people coming from outside there, and they are coming with thanksgiving to God. That's what they are doing. And the angels of God, they are with them. As you say, the same way you are praising God, they are always praising God. And God, they are praising God. And they are going through it. The going through of what the Lord has been doing from day one of this world, they are going to be And that is them sharing their time of God. Hallelujah. So it's not about the Lord, it's not the Lord's part. It's the part of the last year. Said about the uh, reference, yeah. Every one of us, God has done it 
So every time we sing that song, let's just be excited. You are not that worthy. And when the Lord sees you, He will do much more. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. Accept our offering, both the one that has been given online and the one that has been given physically. It has come from a heart of gratitude to you. We know that, God, this could not have been without you. Accept our offering and that. Lord, from the pocket from where we have brought them out, let that pocket not leak. Amen. You said, give and it shall be given. That's your own. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That you will cause men to bring into our bosom. Lord, you are not a man that should lie. Neither a son of man that should repent. Lord, we take you by your word. Before the end of this month, this month of let God arise. Arise for us. Amen. Thank you. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. The announcement is why you are standing. The announcement is that Wednesday, Bible study. Please come here, 8 p.m. And don't forget to pray for those who are pregnant among us. One of us is still any moment. Just pray generally and say, God, Thank you for the fruit of the womb. Let that woman deliver safely. Yes. And on Friday, come here as well for prayer meeting, 8 p.m. I believe God answers prayer and he will answer your prayer. Yes. And uh, the first three days, yes, the first three days will be prayer meeting and uh, we'll be here. When is the first day? Wednesday. All right? We'll be here by his grace. By his grace. And another thing, if you have any prayer point, please, please, let's know. Let's send, send the prayer point. You don't need to put your name there. But if you like, you can put your name there as well. It's at least when the angel of blessing is coming, they'll know whose house. Hallelujah. It's very important. But if you don't put your name, they still know anyway. Hallelujah. So that's Friday at 8 p.m. And then the children, let's clap for them. They are well behaved. Thank you. And then the youth church as well. Thank God for the youth as well for that special number. Hallelujah. Praise God. Very powerful. Very powerful. The Lord bless you. There shall be showers of the fourth and the last for me. And from us. May it be done unto you according to your faith. Let's share the grace of God together in fellowship. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant, make us complete in every good work, doing his will, walking in us that which is well pleasing in sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to whom be the glory forever and ever. And 2 Corinthians uh, 13 14. That the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be with us now and surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the day. And we should dwell in the house forever. Some people think you cannot say the Lord's Prayer. Let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in that, and the things of heaven. Give us this day is our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You have put them wrong, but you can say, The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Thank you, Father. Honestly, the Lord bless you. Amen, Tom.